This is really the first all season since you've been here. You've been able to make trades for some high profile guys. You've gotten good picks in free agency, but a little different splash this year. Just talk about those two guys and, and what are you making those sort of picks? What message does it send in the locker room? Well, I think that the message it sends to the locker room is just you know how much we believe in the locker room. I mean, obviously they're two very high quality veterans. Um, I think their play clearly speaks for themselves. You know, I, I think anybody that's followed Brandon Stefan or just from pure football uh, ability and production, you're definitely excited about it. Um, but the type of people they are, and you could see it immediately just uh, when they came in to sign their contracts, um, the, the impact that they'll make, particularly with our, our young players. So I'm real excited the way they fit into our locker room because uh, I always you know, continue to you know, emphasize that the locker room is the most important component uh, of the football operations. And, and uh, I feel we have an excellent locker room to build off of, and these guys are a great fit for us both. When you talk about Cooks, he's been to a lot of different schemes. Yeah. Is, he, is that scheme-friendly, quarterback-friendly, a guy that can jump into a different place and still have the same success? No, I think it's a great point. Uh, I think it definitely shows his versatility, and, and I think any time you – you jump from scheme to scheme. I know for me personally, to now to have the opportunity to coach uh, the last couple of years in a digit system based, you know, that was you know that was formed from a digit system, and you know now and being a West Coast, you know, offense uh, individual my whole career. I mean, when you learn other systems, I, I mean, it just broadens your football education. Uh, so, and I think Brandon definitely brings that. Mike, you've talked about when you're in Green Bay, your level of involvement in personnel, how that's changed now. How much did you roll up your sleeves on those two deals and those two guys? Oh, they're, they're, those were two easy deals. Uh, I mean, I, I mean, it's you know, you got to remember we played against Stephon. You know, he was with the Colts this past year, so and uh, yeah, so that the, the film evaluation was easy. Um, but it, you know, frankly, I, it was more of a can we get this done from a business you know perspective. I thought, you know, really Connor, his only challenge was really his injuries, you know, in the early this year. He's, you know, I think he's definitely, he's on the rise. You know, he's, uh, you know, he's, he's one of your young guys. You, you like to get back. Uh, I think his best football is in front of him. Uh, he's, he did a great job for us last year. You know, and I thought he particularly played well in the, you know, in the playoff game too. So, uh, big fan of Connor. Very versatile. You know, he probably gets tired of me telling him how much I like playing him at fullback. But, no, he's, uh, you, got a, you got a really good one there. What's the vision you have with Brandon in the offense? Well, how does he fit in what you guys want to do off here? The vision? Yeah. I think just like anything, you know, you, you know, everybody wants to put, you know, a player in in, in one spot, and, and we've talked about this before. You know, the, the versatility of wide receiver play to me is key, uh, because when you can play, you know, an individual inside and outside, obviously it gives him more flexibility to to get, you know, create more opportunities for him for him personally, but it also makes the other guys around him better. So and I think you can see that now with, with CD, his ability to play inside and outside and, and to have that type of versatility. But I mean, I think he's, if you're going to line him up, um, you know, he's, his outside vertical routes, um, you know, I think he's exceptional at, you can see the, the production that he's, uh, you know, he's really had in every, in every scheme that he's played in too. So, um, you know, we, we've, 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 we have looked at his route tree, uh, the routes that he's, you know, primarily been used at, what he's been productive at. So, you know, we'll play, cl we'll pay close attention to that. When people look at your background and think about, you know, uh, you know, West Coast offense, how different this is going to look. But it, is it really? I mean, it's kind of a fusion of the two. Is it really more maybe protections and, and things like that versus? Yeah, I, I, I don't see a huge change in the, in the run in the run component of it. Uh, you know, schematically and. You know, but you know, I think it's just like anything, if you if you put three play callers in one room and look and gave them the same playbook, they're all going to call a little differently. So I, I th that's I think that's to be expected. Uh, I think you definitely second point is you have to evolve it every year, anyways. Um, you know, if if we didn't make the change of play caller, we would we'd be evolving anyways. You know, we you look the way we evolved uh, from 2020 when I recommended us run the ball back then into 2021 to 2022. Um, you know, that's you know that that's an evolution you need to continue to make. So, I think how we play um, this year will be similar to how we played last year. But yeah, protection. You, you, we definitely want to be better in the area of protection. You know, that, that's that's something we spent a, a ton of time on early in the process. You know, I, I think the uh, you know anytime you can protect your quarterback better, you know it, it, it's helpful. So and you. And you know, if you look at us, I think we we're 68% completion percentage last year. We want to be above 70. So you know, we're just trying to 
you know, you're, you're always trying to improve your efficiency. So obviously the giveaways is, a, is another thing we're focused on. But so I, to me, th th those are all normal, normal focal points in the off season. And that's, that's where our, you know, that's where our focus has been. Mike, how tough a decision was it to uh, to get to cut uh, Zeke, and uh, what went into that decision making? Yeah, I mean, I mean, Zeke has been a, a you know big part of the Dallas Cowboys, both on and off the field. So I think you know we're all in tune to that, very sensitive to that too. Um, I know my time, you know, with what I admired about Zeke like going back to the pandemic, you know, when we had our meetings out into the Ford Center, and you know, Zeke sat in the you know, first seat, front row, and so I mean he's. He's very coachable, um, a great teammate. You know, he's, he's, he's loved in the locker room. So, I mean, I, all those things factor. But, you know, I think just like anything, you know, the, the financial, you know, puzzle, you're always trying to put it together and, and trying to, you know, build and grow your football team. So th these decisions are always very difficult. Mike, when you first came here, you uh, didn't change the offensive language. Yeah. And, and it seemed like a wise move. Do you make some changes in that regard now? Uh, and how is the install going? Well, the only language change that we'll, that we'll make is is to the new things, and, and and we've been very sensitive to, you know, how things were called before. You know, I mean, because, you know, because you got two guys that that you know, that have been in the West Coast offense, and Brian Schottenheimer and I, um, you know, and the beauty of Brian, he's also coaching a digit system, and you know, and Brian is you know has his own, you know, playbook to say, uh, which is a combination of both. So that, that, oh, okay, this has been a very good. Very good fit. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I think the new wrinkles that we have will probably be terms that we feel fit the current terminology. Or if it's brand new, we may use some of the West Coast terminology just because there's history. See, I'm, I'm I'm huge into the history of concepts. Just fortunately, being in the same offense for 30 years, you know, when you when you say flanker drive, or, you know, you you say double, you know, pinch, or I mean, they're those concepts are more than just routes and a, and a read for the quarterback. So, you know, I mean, there's every play has history. You know, when it came into the league, what it was primarily used, you know, we have, we have a thing we call PCP. It's, you know, the, the player play expectation and what we want out of each play. So, you know, it's, and I think that just locking that down a little tighter, I think it'll be. It'll be helpful for us. And you guys are uh, burning the midnight oil, getting that thing done. Oh yeah, no, it's been, uh, you know, that's, you know, that's why, you know, I didn't go to the combine. Frankly, I just, I just flew up for the media part. But uh, yeah, we've been, we've been going, you know, pretty much around the clock weekends, and so it's, the, the offensive staff's in a year one mode. You know, we're, we're in a year one mode. Hey Mike, you might remember me, Kayla from Saint Norbert College in the Pier. Will you nice and loudly tell me about the charities and causes that you're most passionate about? Well, I mean, the thing about you know our charities, I mean, we, we've always focused on the kids, you know, and uh, just just staying in tune with that. We we got some things that we have established over the years. We haven't, we haven't frankly haven't established our footprint yet in Dallas. Uh, we're we're in the process of completing that now from just from the foundation documents and so you know so forth. But it'll definitely be focused on the children as we always have been. Mike, just uh, following up on the question about Zeke. How do you envision what it looks like trying to replace him? Maybe it's too cold, you know, organizationally, but also on the field. Um, well, I, I think, you know, first off, I mean, you talk about a football part of it. I mean, it's, you know, anytime you have a big change like this, you know, because you'd look at, I mean, just look at Zeke's opportunities. You know, I, I just, I'll speak on just my time with him the last three years. So where do those touches go? And, you know, it's, and, you know, so much of, this game is made about how many times you're running or pass it, but it's really how do you get the ball dis distributed to your perimeter players? So, and it's no different with Tony. I mean, Tony, you know, it's, and frankly, sitting there and having Tony and Zeke, you know, that was the conversation in the offensive staff game plan meetings is how are we going to get these guys to touch the ball, you know, and so, you know, that won't change. So you just look at where those touches go. Do some of them touches go to the, the receiver tight ends? I mean, uh, the, you know, the new backs. Will definitely absorb some of those opportunities. Maybe Tony's will go up. So, ball distribution has always been my focal point, uh, because particularly because when you have 70 plays in a game, if you're not getting the ball distributed 75% of those plays, then you know you're playing uphill to the defense. Coach, what do you feel is getting a kind of well, I just had a great answer there. That's <laughs> right. Can we use that again? Give this one. It's really good. <laughs> uh, you're getting a great guy, hard worker. Uh, he's an ascending player. He did. He did a heck of a job for us. Um, I'm, I'm really happy for him. Uh, but you know, he's 
versatile. I mean, he you know he played fullback, he played you know tight end. I mean, he's he's a, he's, he's very athletic, um, and I think he, his best days are in front of him. Sorry for doubling up. Do you, do you see Chuma uh, Idoga as a guard or a tackle or both? Ah, uh, both. But I mean, we'll probably start him in the left guard line. Is you know is what we talked about. What do you like about him? His game, his flexibility, his athletic ability. I mean, you can see he's uh, he's a good athlete. Came in, did a nice job in the interviews. So. You know, we feel like he'll be a good fit for us. Is he a candidate to start left guard? I haven't, haven't lined up with him yet. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah, but based on film valuation, he's he definitely has that you know that capability without a doubt. Yeah. Mike Stevens said yesterday that part of the mindset of not giving Zika a pay cut offer is you don't want to be insulting to the player. How do you? I mean, when a when a decision like that is coming up, what's your input in it? And I mean, do you agree that the business part of it? Yeah. Yeah, I I think it's healthy. Um, you know, in every every place does it that does it differently. I, I think when the head coach and in early out and I learned this from Ted Thompson because it, it was his philosophy and, and I and I and I agree with it. When the head coach is put in a position of finances, you know, it, it can be conflicting. You know, you, you know, the coaches have to coach the players. Uh, their relationship is 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 definitely a lot different than the than the business component. You know, the business individuals dealing with them too. So yeah, I, as far as exactly how. And what in the conversations were handled, the business part, I was not part of. And on another note, do you talk at all to coaches about who have called plays and gone away for several years and then come back about what that process is like? Have I talked to anybody? Yeah. No, I haven't. What do you expect that process to be like? I know we talked to you a little bit about it at Combine, but obviously you have preseason if you want to, you know, but do you expect it to be a little bit of a adjustment going back? Um, you know, I'm, I'm excited about it. I, I, you know, I'll tell you this. I. You know, you, you forget how much time you put into it, uh, and I'm just talking about mentally. Um, I mean, you're in the shire riding to work. You know, it's it's constant. You know, it's you know, I, you have the conversations. You know, you're going through the cut-ups, and we're discussing how does this concept fit with this concept? Take this concept out, put this concept in. When you're going to call that? So that that's it's going on constantly. I mean, it's so because you know I, I've done it long enough that you know when you because. All the recommendations of your staff are outstanding. They want to bring it up, and it's so they're all good points. But you know, at the end of the day, you know, the guy calling it, the play caller, has to be the filter of okay, how does that fit? You know, because yeah, I love that play, but are you going to call it? You know, so um, so to me, it doesn't start once the preseason game starts. It's the thought process and in the in the mental training starts now. I don't sleep as well as I did prior to the you know. So, uh, but but you know. I'm sure I'm talking in my sleep more than I ever have, but it's that, that's uh, that's how it always was. You know, it, 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 it Mike, takes a lot. It, it takes up a lot of your headspace. Is there a rhythm thing? You think you've been rusty at all? Or you, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, I'm just going to rely on you guys to let me know. That's <laughs> game. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we'll go through the calls. I'll say, yeah, I wish I had these four back. You know, like, I know exactly the four you're talking about. I was thinking seven, then we'll fight over that, four to seven. So. Yeah, we thought your play calling was pretty good 12 out of 17 times. Yeah, we can't wait to hear that. <laughs> Mike, uh, Chris Thomas, we're working on a story relation with Sean Payton in terms of when a coach has won a Super Bowl with one team and he goes to another. What is it like having won a Super Bowl with another team and then you go to another team? Does that even increase expectations? I mean, hey, this guy's won a Super Bowl, he's going to do it for us as well. Uh, I, well, I, I, you know, I, I think when you, you know, I, I know personally work for the Dallas Cowboys. I mean, a, a big part of why, you know, I know I pursued the opportunity was because of the <laughs> expectations. I mean, I, I just, that's what it's all about. And once, and once you, once you stand on the stage and hold a trophy, nothing else matters. I mean, it's, you know, playoffs are great. It's a really a stepping stone to get to where you want. So, yeah, the expectation part of it is, you know, I'm sure, will be the same for Sean. I mean, I, I mean, that's, you, you get. You get to this age, and, and, and I can't tell you how many people, particularly even in the media, that I haven't seen in a number of years, uh, just because I haven't been I haven't been to the owner meeting since 2018. You know, is how fast it's gone. So, and uh, time's flying by; it's not slowing down, and it's all about that opportunity. But yeah, I I, I would think the expectation is clearly, to, you know, it's all about winning a Super Bowl. Yeah. Do you think? Why do you think uh, no coach has ever won a Super Bowl in 2019? Holmgren did with Green Bay and then did go to one in Seattle, but nobody's ever got one too. It's hard. Uh, it's, it's hard. I mean, you had a when you win one, you definitely had a culture and a process, and, and your program uh, was you know puts you in that position to to win that first one. And and I definitely had that in my last experience. But to re, you know, I, I don't even say rebuild it, but to re, to create that 
in another place, it, it takes time. It's it's difficult. So I can see clearly why it's never been done. You, you often say it's about the quarterback, you yeah. know, back in the center. How does ever the change you're making in the plays, uh, philosophy on offense, protection, affect that? And why is that important for us? Well, I just think like anything, I mean, you got, you got to be in tune with the climate of, of the National Football League. I think we all recognize that the, the defensive line play, I know my time in the league, I think it's at, it's at a historical high. And, and you, know, the, you know, the value that, that's put into the D-line play as far as from draft and free agency, I mean, that's a priority position, you know, in – and you've seen the good defensive lines that, that have a six, seven man rotation, they're, they're getting it to eight to 10. So, I mean, just look at our division alone. Uh, so you, you have to pay close attention to that. And so, you know, with that, from an offense perspective, you got to take a hard look at your, your protection schemes and, and things. And, and, and we do that every year. So this isn't anything new, but, you know, but like I said, we'll be, we'll be different in some things and, but it'll be about protecting him better, you know, because, you know, my, my goal is for Dak to play 20 games next year. And if he plays 20 games next year, obviously, um, you know, we'll be right where we want to be. Pre-snap decisions, um, does that go pre-snap responsibilities of a quarterback? It seems like a small thing to talk about. I mean, it's hard to quantify on the outside. Is that, that sort of thing as well? I mean, just get from less to, or, or is that even possible for like, the game to play? I mean, football's a... It's an easy game. If you want your guys to play faster, give them less responsibility. So, and and that's where and, and that's where the secret sauce is in putting together you know putting together a good offensive system is the ability to to be multiple, uh, to have the variations, to protect your core concepts, make sure the balls get distri distributed to your perimeter players, uh, make sure you're giving guys the opportunities to fit their skill set, and and with that you know it makes it it makes it easier and cleaner for the quarterback. So. You know, when you when you get into the game and you have a receiver that makes a hundred million dollars and you, you have to get them twenty targets or fifteen targets, I mean that, that's difficult. You know, it's you know, and you know, I, I went through it with Aaron in Green Bay. I mean, you know, just he throws it to the open receiver, and and our perimeter players will understand that that you know, you know, we'll create the opportunities, but you know, everybody's got to do their job, and you know, he can't be, you know, in a game worried about trying to get a guy the ball. That's my job. You know, that's the coach's job. So, and I, I think, you know, with that, and it's human nature, it happens all the time. You know, it's, you know, a guy, guy's frustrated, he needs a ball, and you know, everybody's personality is a little different. So, you know, it's, these are all common challenges that you go through all the time. And, you know, we just want to, we just want to be better. You know, we just want to take another step. What does this all season look like with that in your relationship? How much more time you guys put together? I would say we, we, we spent a, a lot more time together, but that's that's what's in front of us. We're, we're still, you know, we're still kind of wrapping things up. You know, we, we feel good about where the run game is right now. Uh, we, we still have some things in protection that we're we're trying to get cleaned up. And, and and really, before I came down here, we were, you know, fully into the in, into the pass concept. So you know, we we have them all on the board, but you know, it's it's time to now trim them down. And you know, so in so we'll bring, we'll bring him in for part of it. I know him and Brian have, and Scott have that those those three have been talking on a regular basis. So um, it's it's a very fluid you know situation right now. But you know we haven't locked we haven't locked it in yet exactly what we're going to do. Have y'all gone over all the picks and, and stuff like that? And decisions on that? Yeah. The interceptions. Have y'all gone over that? And yeah, definitely. We we spent some time. Uh, you know, he was in for. Uh, Oh, whatever day he was in there for, uh, so then he came up and oh, he's in there for the captain's workout. So, uh, so he came up and spent about four hours with with Scott and I, and, and we went back and looked at the decision making opportunities and you know on, of interceptions and potential interceptions and just you know talking through. And I, it's healthy because you know no, no different. I mean, you know, I thought Doug did an excellent job with the quarterbacks, but the, you know, but the, the the room will be different. I mean, it's just you know, anytime you have a new coach in there and. You know, it'll be Scott's new opportunity too, but you know, Brian and I will be in there pretty much full time. So, you know, get getting that, you know, that that landscape laid too. So we just, um, it's it's pretty fluid. Speaking of Aaron, in your busy day, how much awareness do you have of that thing, that drama, that situation? Um, I mean, I'm definitely aware of it, but you know, I, I think just like anything, when you know, hey, when it comes down to the business, you know, component of it. You know, that's that's really what it is. So I, I'm not, yeah, I, I probably know as much as you do. Yeah. 
<laughs> that means nothing. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> uh, you mentioned that football's a simple game, and the less you give the players the pass, the play. Do you expect to simplify some things toward the offense? Yeah. Well, let me say it again. I, I don't want to say less. I mean, I, I think, I think you, you know. You said less responsibility. Yeah, because you know you can you can have a pass play. I mean, we all have similar plays. We all have similar scheme. But how you're coaching that scheme and when you where you utilize it, which defenses you you know anticipated going against, how do you react when the defense is maybe slanted, you know, in in their favor? So yeah. you know how much you know if where we seventy percent check your plays at the line of scrimmage and we go back to fifty five, you know, so that's a fifteen percent you know increase of, of less responsibility. So it's it's so tight. So it's not yeah. like you know it was wrong before. So let's not. Please don't twist anything because it's, 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 it's not it's how how we're going to utilize the plays moving forward. So I mean, you, you watch concepts throughout the whole league, and, and there's a lot of similarities. But how the specifics of how they're being coached—that's the difference. Um, when you use them, which situation you use them, that's slightly different. So those are the, those those are the things I'm talking about. We hear so much about putting scheme to personnel versus personnel to scheme. How different is your vision for an offense Dak versus Aaron, given that they're pretty different quarterbacks? I'm not even sure what you're asking. Are you talking about our offense? Yeah. I and mean, when you think about how you want to call it, you're, you're saying the idea is to have those plays so that by the time they get to the line of scrimmage, it fits what you want, what your goals are getting. How different is what, what you want for Dak versus what you want? Well, no, number one, you have, to, you have to play at the line of scrimmage. I mean, there's a... You know the defenses today. I mean, just look at first and second down today. You're seeing more defensive fronts than you ever had in the history of football. I mean, it's never been that you know that many variations. Uh, so um, you know they're they've made first and second down a real challenge. You know, first and second down used to be clear. See, I mean, when you look at a defensive coordinator, you could when the first you know analytics report comes out, you you can see where he spends his time. Does he spend a lot of time in red zones? He spend more time in third down. Because of the variations in the multi, you know, multiple schemes, uh, first and second down has significantly increased the last three or four years, probably three to five years. So, uh, so that it's it's those kind of things. So my point is, you have to have audibles and at the line of scrimmage opportunities for your quarterback. And it's frankly, it's it's the, it's the first thing we do. I mean, we we start with two minute offense and things like that because you have to have that, that versatility because. Hey, that's the most important situation because you're going to have 10 games a year come down to the two minute, and um, you know that, that training is you can't have enough of it. So, I mean, so that part will never change. It's just you know how we do it, when we do it, you know, it's just going to be a little different. Coach, about protection, uh, Tyron Smith coming back and, and just clear Terrence Steele is and his return, and, and how you envision to get to that you envision Yeah, we've been talking about that, and you know, it's you know, hey, get get your you know most your five most veterans on the field at the same time. I mean, that, that's a you know very fair outlook, but you know how you train those 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 positions, you know, because you definitely, you know, 17 games is it's a long year, you know, and we, we haven't had, you know, the five linemen with consecutive starts, you know, in my time here. You have to pay you have to pay attention to those statistics. They're real. We've lived that we, we've lived that the last three years. So. Um, so with that, we need to train that way. So you know, we're, we're going to have to have position flex with some of our some of our players. Uh, some of our young guys need to take the next big step, and I think they they definitely will with Lasco and Ball. And so you know, and, you know, I think Matt Farniak's in there every day. So these young guys need to elevate, and uh, you know, hopefully we'll continue to add to that room too. So uh, position flex will be important because I, I, ideally, I'd love to line up. I mean, you know, I tell you this all the time. Just you look at the statistics of. An offensive line that has consecutive starts, it directly equates to winning football games. You know, I mean, I think Philadelphia had the highest, highest, um, you know, five-man start this year. If I, if my numbers are correct, so that's important. But you know, that hasn't been the case for us, which is fine. But so we need to train that way.